Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at Patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Squid Game. Season 1, Episode 1, Red Light, Green Light. This is the first episode in uh, my episode-by-episode episode recaps that I'm doing. Uh, previously, it was Ted Lasso. Uh, I went for season one and season two of Ted Lasso. Now, Squid Game, I was sh- deciding between a bunch of things, and Squid Game was the, the show uh, that I felt most compelled to talk about, but also kind of the most scared to talk about because it's Korean language f- show. Uh, I really enjoyed the show. Long episodes. They're hour-long episodes. Uh, I think there's only eight episodes, so that's that's good. Nope, nine episodes, so that's still good. Uh, But what I noticed from doing uh, Ted Lasso season one and season two is how much different it is watching a show when you just one episode at a time, but actually really paying attention to it. I take notes while I'm I'm watching it for just ideas and things that I want to make sure I talk about. And it's it's a, a different experience. Like the detail at which I will know the show will be much deeper than any other show because I'm watching it in a different way. And uh, so that part I'm excited about. And I've already started because one of one of the other things that I'm worried about is the names. It's not normal. I I mean, it's not in my it's not in in my world. So I've I spent uh, just words, a lot of things. I've I googled a lot of things watching this show because I want to make sure I understand everything as good as possible. As good as possible, I want to make sure I refer to characters by their name. So I had to like, how do you how are Korean names structured? Where the last name, the family name, is the beginning. And usually Korean names have three parts to them, three syllables. The first part is the family name, and then the last two are your given name. There might be some adjustment in that part, but for the most part, so now I know who's like their first name is. I like just understanding that little bit. I needed that. I needed to, and so, and I'm like, I'm translating currency, like how much, because this this show deals a lot with debt. I'm translating currency, how much that is in American dollars. And like they're, because they're talking about millions of dollars and billions of dollars. And it's like, clearly, it's not, the exchange rate's a little bit different. So I I had to do that. I even looked up like what foods they're eating. Like I wanted to know everything. Because I want to make sure I talk about this show that I really enjoyed, which is different than Ted Lasso season two, where I, I or season one, where I'd seen season one already, and then I went back through, watched all the episodes again, and then for the first time watched season two, which that that whole process was very unique. Uh, so I have seen all of these episodes already, not knowing, just reviewing the entire season. Uh, so if you want to hear my thoughts on the entire season, you can do that. So anyway, I should get going because it's, it, you know, there's a lot to talk about. These are hour-long episodes. But anyway, so Squid Game, season one, episode one, red light, green light, starts. We got a little little flashback to when our lead, our main character, Ga Young, was a kid playing this game called Squid Game. And it's these lines that are drawn in the sand that kind of look like a squid, where it's like a triangle on top and then a square below it, and little circles signifying the different connection points, the different corners. And, you know, he's talking about how this game is played, the rules of the game, how it feels playing a game when you're a kid, how it feels like if you lose, you're going to die. This great little black and white flashback scene of a, a young, a young 
becoming victorious playing this squid game and just like the the pure joy of victory that comes from winning from being successful at a game which that's a a theme throughout at least this episode is this like this really jo- this joy of victory because there's these moments where our lead Ga Jung Ga Jung Ga Jung Ga Jung no that's his daughter his name is Oh, where is it? I know I have it written down. Where is his name? His name is Ha. Is it right? Ha? Where is it? Uh, I have his mom's name. I have his name. Where? Gi Hoon. Gi Hoon is our main character. Already, already off to a horrible start, calling our main character his daughter's name. But it is his daughter's birthday in this episode, which her actual birth date is kind of a funny number that it reoccurs throughout this episode as well. Uh, so anyway, it starts off black and white. Uh, Gihun playing Squid Game. Gihun, Gihun, Gihun. That's our main character, Gihun. And then we see him modern day, and he is just like the most just kind of... Ho- he's a horrible person. He's eating dinner at home. His mom is old. She's... You know, trying cleaning up, hobbling around the apartment. He's begging her for money, trying to get as much money out of her as possible. You know, and she's like, "Well, you don't even pay. You know, you can't even afford to live here. Like, money is a huge situation. He's in a, a ton of debt, so his whole mentality is just like, if you got money, go spend it, go have fun, because it's like, I mean, when you're in huge amounts of debt." It's like, and the the proposition of getting out of that in a lifetime is so overwhelming. At some point, you just, like, throw it all away, which this character has. He just doesn't care. He's like, just live for the day. Just try to enjoy the day. And it's not necessarily the best way to live. Because, you know, he's trying to get his this money from his mom. It's his daughter's birthday, so she's, like, feeling generous. He uses every manipulation possible to get money from his mom even steals her debit card which ends up being kind of a funny scene where him and his buddy are in you know a little kiosk atm kiosk and she changed the password and he's like flipping out turns out like i said his daughter's birthday so they take that money and they go to the horse track and they bet on horses he loses at first but then he bets again guess what he bets he bets the six and the eight because that's his daughter's birthday and guess what happens? He wins. And it's the joy of victory again. That same kind of joy when he was a kid playing Squid Game. He has that joy winning from his daughter's birthday. It was good luck. Cashes out. Of course, his debt collectors, these loan sharks that are after him, they track him down at the, the horse gambling spot, the horse track. And in his getaway, he runs into somebody that we see later on. This pickpocket runs into. We don't find out till later that she took all of his winnings that he just won from gambling his daughter's birthday on a horse race. Which the, the amounts were like, oh, I, did I write that down? I should really have my, my master notes open for this stuff. Um... I forget what the amount was that uh, it wasn't that much. Does it have it? He had like, uh, so he won 4,560,000 won, uh, which in American money is just under $4,000. So he won, it was $3,872 as of the exchange rate yesterday when I watched this and took notes. That's what he won at the, the racetrack. Four grand about. Got stolen by the pickpocket. And he's like, owes this, uh, this loan shark, which you find out later. But I'm going to say it now just as a comparison what his debt is. He only had four grand, just under four grand. What he owns owes to the loan shark, which you find out, is uh, in American money is $135,000 is what he owes. So he only had 4000 
He owes 135000 <laughs> So quite a bit off. That would have been a very small drop in that bucket. That's what he owes to loan sharks. You find out later what he owes in this episode. You find out what he owes to banks. What his debt is in, to the banks is $212,000 in American money. So in total, which the one is more dangerous than the other, he's $347,000 in debt in American dollars, whatever that tra- translates to won. Uh, so $347,000. That's a lot. A third of a million. That's so much debt. Like $100,000 in debt on its own is insane. That's so much money. That's like, how could you not live any other lifestyle than his lifestyle of like, well, fuck it. The only way I could potentially pay that off is to gamble and hopefully win big, right? Or the other way to get out of massive amounts of debt is crime because crime is the other thing. Gambling and crime are the two things that potentially could have a big enough payday to where you can, in one foul swoop, get rid of all that. So that I made sure to look up. I wanted to make sure all these, because just it's tough when they're talking about millions of dollars, because like that's so that's even so much crazier. So I got had to put it in terms of so he got four grand taken from him, uh, but they you know which he didn't have anyway. So they make him sign a contract, a physical rights contract, which I did not look that up, but it can't be good. It can't be good. I mean, it's like, oh, you're like, you no longer have the right to your body anymore. I don't even, I don't know. Oh, they're going to harvest his organs. That's what it is, which that's kind of an interesting thing. I didn't till just now put that together, but that comes later on in the show. Uh, not this episode. But anyway, so he, f- he signed a physical rights contract uh, to the, the loan shark. A little over four years ago, I started The Many Faces. It's an ongoing series of abstract ink portraits. Each piece is improvised. Each piece is released daily. Start collecting now. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF. That stands for The Many Faces. And save yourself 25% when you use coupon code RTS. That stands for The Ray Taylor Show because that's what you're listening to. And I love you. So I want you to save 25% when you use that coupon code. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF and use coupon code RTS to save 25% when you start collecting one of over 1,600 original ink paintings by myself. I made them. Support me. I love you. Back to the show. So he, he uh, has just a little bit of money. I think he, I don't know where that, but he ends up going to like, it's his daughter's birthday and he was going to go take her out. He won all this money. He was going to go take her out for a great birthday, fried chicken, whatever she wanted. Uh, Now he has no money and he's trying to win a a birthday present for her on this little crane game. And this kid comes up who's like the crane master and wins uh, this unknown gift. It's in a box, ribbon around it. Don't know what the gift is. But again, it's another moment of this like this joy of victory, right? We've seen this joy of victory. The beginning when he was a kid, the horse races, even even the f- guessing what the pin number was from his grandma. This guy has such a joy of, of like v- victory. Winning at the, the, the racetrack winning the gift out of this crane thing this kid really came through and helped him out took his daughter to go uh eat these i i looked it up uh what it was because it's like a uh, junk food it's uh like rice noodles these like cylindrical kind of they almost look like vienna sausage shape uh but made out of rice and then they're deep fried looked good like yeah i i had to like it, it was a thing. It was a disappointing meal that he was giving his daughter. So I was like, 
what is this meal? And it's served with like fish cakes and stuff like that, which I don't know what that is. But like, I, you know, I had to find out. I had to find out. So he takes his daughter to go eat some junk food, which, I, you know, translated into the U.S., you know, McDonald's or something. You know, and she doesn't eat McDonald's. She, her parents took her to a steak dinner. Kids can't appreciate high cuisine. Why take them to, she's like eight, taking her to a steak dinner. So anyway, of course she would like that. But anyway, gives her the gift, which is funny, because he didn't know what was in there. This is mystery gift. This is kid one on the crane game. Opens it up, and it's a gun. And then there's the moment where the girl's holding the gun, and she pulls the trigger, not knowing that the gun is actually a lighter, because it just spits out a flame. But she pulled the trigger of a gun inside of this rest, you know, where they're eating. But anyway, the kids shouldn't have guns. Lighter guns, any kinds of guns. Like, it's like, can we get away from guns? Unless you're hunting, what are we doing here? So the gun lighter, um, yeah, kind of disappointing. Walks his daughter home to his wife. He's got an estranged wife who is, you know, has a new husband. You know, but they share custody with his daughter, and he's kind of a deadbeat dad. He got to spend the her birthday with her. It's some of it got to take her out for some junk food. So on his way home, he runs into this guy, looks like a salesman in the subway, and he asks him if he wants to play this game, uh, Didakji, D D A K J I. I looked it up because the game itself reminded me of a game that I had played as a child. Called Pogs. And this is before, this was early Pogs, before they had slammers. It was just when you had just the cardboard discs, put a stack of cardboard discs on the ground, and you take another cardboard disc, milk cap, which they, is where they came from, and you threw it at the stack. And any of the, the Pogs that flipped over, any of the milk caps that flipped over, you win those. And that's Pogs. And then once it became commercialized in America, then they came out with Slammers. Because kids, it was too hard to throw paper on paper and get it to flip. So it's a similar game, this uh, Didakji. Where it's these squares, these like folded paper squares. And two different colors. And, you know, you set one of them on the ground and your, you know, your opponent throws theirs at it. And the idea is to get it to flip over. So it is the same game as Pogs, which I was happy to have discovered in my research. Uh, so this guy is offering to play this game with him. And if he wins, he gets 100,000 won, which is, you know, like a, a $1,000 or a $100, a thousand. I don't know. Wasn't as much. I didn't write that down. I don't think I wrote that down. Um, But that's where you find out, like, he says, like, I don't know if I want to do that. And this is where you find out the debt that he's in. You find out the, the like, this guy already knows everything about him. He knows everything about uh, Gihun. He's like, this is how much you're, you're in debt, $135,000 in American money to your loan sharks. You're in debt to $212,000 to the banks. So, you know, you need this. I know you need this money. And I don't know if that's what he used to get him to, but he conv- they play. And the dude's even like, okay, well, when he loses, because Gihun's not very good at this game, loses, and he's, he's able to receive a slap in replacement of uh, what he would owe this other guy, $100,000 or whatever the amount 100,000 won. So they play and he's like, "Hey, if you he wins a bunch of money, you see him afterwards counting this stack of cash." And the guy's like, "Hey, if you want to I think this is where he breaks down his debt, but it's like gives him this business card. And he's like, "If you w- want to play some more games and win a ton of money, give this number a call. 
We'll make that happen. We know how much debt you're in. We've done our research on you, sir. Uh, so here, just give this number a call. And he's like, ah, I'll think about it, whatever. So he leaves. He goes to his friend's mom's fish market to buy some fish because he's stoked. He got all this money. You know, after had the, a lot of highs and lows. So now you have this more joy. He's super happy at this, his friend's fish market. Uh, Sung Woo. Sung Woo's mom. Uh, and they're talking about him and how he's like this businessman or whatever. And he's out of town, blah, blah, blah. And Gi Hoon's super happy because he just got all this money. Um, and she, she, you know, she doesn't believe that he earned it, that he gambled. You know, he, he won it in gambling. And so he's clearly got a, you know, clearly got an issue. I mean, gambling, the, you know, there's reasons why Vegas uh, has tons of money because it's very it's not in your favor to win when you gamble. Um, so he gets some fish, gets some food to take home uh, to have uh have dinner with his mom uh and that's where you find out that uh his family his or his his former wife his ex-wife and his kid are going to be moving to the united states uh, because of the stepdad got a, a job in the u.s and uh, there was a moment when he was out to dinner with his daughter where he promised her that next year he would uh do it up nice and big for her birthday uh, and the, the daughter hesitates to say anything because she knew, but she didn't want to be the one to tell him. And uh, so he finds out later that night when he's from his mom, when she's talking. And it's, you know, it's it's this thing where it's he's already living under massive amounts of debt, massive amounts of debt. Who's somebody who had a past like he also went through like his education and where he used to work. And all these things uh, and how everything changed during restructuring and how he tried to start uh, a restaurant uh, and it failed. He tried to start a little market that failed. So he tried to do stuff, tried to start his own business after being unhappy with the business where, where he was working and he failed. So now he's in all this massive debt and now he's going to lose his family unless he's able to have show income and 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 you know be able to take her in so it's just another thing that that he's losing basically which is you know another reason why he gives that that number a call he meets the the minivan so they're told to go meet gets picked up in a minivan that he ends up getting gas there's like a bunch of people already in there that are sleeping he's like what's going on here and you see the gas come come in See the first time we see anybody with a mask. The driver's wearing one of those masks. I forget which symbol it was. Uh, I'd imagine it would be a, a, a circle, but because I, I believe those are the lower on the totem poles. Uh, the password was red light, green light to get into the get into the van, which you see once he shows up. Wakes up in uh, the bunks, which is a crazy like just giant room with all these bunk beds that are built out of steel. Like storage steel in, in in like lining not you know kind of like rows up against a wall going like ten high ten bunks high like it's really cool visually the the series is amazing but you, just seeing their bunks in this giant room this these barracks where they sleep uh, and he's waking up everybody's wearing their jumpsuits everybody's got a number his number Gi Hoon's number is. Uh, Five or 460, 456. There's his name. Gi Hoon is four, uh, 456, is his number. He uh, wakes up next to this old man who's like counting. The old man has got number one. Uh, he runs into the pickpocket who's number 67, who's in a fight with uh, some other gangster guy, apparently, she used to work with, who is number 101. He sees his friend is in there, his friend who's he went to his mom's uh, fish market earlier the day before, whatever, after he, you know, won all that money playing pogs. He sees uh, Sang Wu is there. He's seeing all these people, almost 500 people, 456 people to be exact, because uh, uh, Gi Hoon was the last one 
The old man was the first one, and uh, everybody in between. Uh, you see all these people waking up, uh, and they're like asking questions. And then you see, like we we see the the jumpsuits, the pink jumpsuit guys with the the different mass helmets come out. Right, the the zeros are like the low the low hanging fruit. Then you got the squares, which are I imagine like the supervisors or whatever. They're the the rung higher. And they're kind of having this back and forth with all the people. They're like, ah, why, why should we stay here? And then they start, because they've done their research, they start showing all of the things, the reasons why they're here. Like, this is why you're in debt. And that's where we see uh, Sang Woo, who is in quite a bit more debt than even uh, Gi Hoon. Like, exponentially more. Like it million, like actual in American money, millions of dollars. I didn't do the actual translations, uh, but it was quite. It was like some people were like billion. Like there was like uh, people are like not doing good financially, massively. Like Gi Hoon is not the. He's like probably average amongst the group of what kind of debts that they're in. But they show on the screen these people in the pink jumpsuits. They're like we've. We've done our research. We know why you're here. You know why you're here. Let's not pretend to not know. Uh, you have to sign these contracts, with the, which the clauses, there's three clauses in there. Uh, clause number one was no voluntary quitting the game. Clause number two is refusal to play, is elimination, is, uh, you know, you get eliminated if you refuse to play a game. Uh, and number three uh, games can be terminated with a majority vote. So if if the majority of people want to quit playing the games, then that would be the only other. Other than that, it's last man standing. Uh, so very similar in some ways to Battle Royale or uh, Hunger Games, but this done in a much more interesting way, I think, than both of those. Very interesting. Uh, so we see Sung Woo, we see why he's there. Um, you see all these characters that we're going to be following throughout the series. Uh, the, the, it's going to be six games over the course of six days. As to what we're told, we're being shown the giant piggy bank in the sky, this giant piggy bank that illuminates these barracks. With this, I would imagine, a green light. I'm colorblind, so I'm just going to assume that's green because of money. We get to see uh, the stairways, the MC Escher super colorful stairways uh, that everybody takes to their first game of red light, green light. Like, we're seeing this whole world. We're seeing behind the scenes where everybody is still wearing masks. You see the, uh, the front man. Wearing uh, more of like a geometric black animal type of a face, as opposed to just the dome face with a uh, either a circle or a square on it. So you're seeing the behind the scenes, which is all very stylish, all very like very artistically uh, laid out and designed and constructed, very beautiful. All the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, so they take their they take their uh, Their walk to the first game, it's red light, green light, which you see the giant doll, which you've you know seen everywhere. And it sings the song, which I'm not even going to attempt to sing. The red light, green light song. And people like, it starts, you know, they're all confused. They don't know why they're there. It's this crazy giant room. doesn't have a roof on it. You see birds. The old man sees birds flying over. But it's just like these giant walls that are painted to look like you're outdoors. Which apparently those were all green screen, which is super interesting. Because you could make it, you could overdo that so easily. But it makes sense. Like it, this place would have like this giant painted area that painted to look like it's outside, kind of. Like a very like, uh, Truman Show esque type of a, a situation. Um, and this giant doll leaning up against a tree. 
uh, and it, it's it's uh, doing the red light green light game. And you see like a couple characters like betting. It's like, I bet I'm going to make it, but you are. And then they play the game. And the first one of those guys, the first one, number 324, the first person in the Squid Games to be eliminated. Number 324, he gets shot. And that's when people freak out. That's when people freak out. Because now they realize elimination means death. They just weren't ready for that to be the way they were going to be eliminated. And they freak out. So now you see hundreds, right? Maybe 200 people. Not everybody. But let's just say the bulk of the contestants get eliminated at this moment. They had second thoughts about how what elimination was. So you have this massive shooting of people running to these doors that are closed that they can't get into. These sniper rifles lining both of the walls to the left and the right. You have this crazy robot doll with these crazy eyes analyzing every movement to uh, thus trigger a shot from these sniper guns. So just massive amounts of people die right off the bat. Bodies piling up by the doors cut to behind the scenes where the front man is on this like giant video floor of all of the pictures that they took on their walk into playing the first game. They all took a selfie and these little things, you know, scanned in on their walk and all their faces just disappearing as they're being eliminated, just like. Just blackness starts to cover this this floor because so many people are dying. And then it's like, then you realize the stakes. This is the moment that, like, I was already in. I was already enjoying every bit of this show. And then when you saw the stakes that, like, oh. And they don't even know how much money they're playing for yet. They just saw an empty piggy bank. They're like, oh, no. Like, we need to survive this. And they only have five minutes to get to the other end. The old man is still super stoked because he's, like, going to do it. There's a moment where uh, where Gihun is trapped. And he's like, you got to get out, man. You got to get out. You got to start running. There's this moment where he trips just as the red light, green light song is ending. And this character who we haven't met yet, we just, he's uh, number 199, is able to grab Gihun mid fall and hold him steady until the doll turns back around. This great scene, right? Great scene, great introduction to this character that we, is number 199, holding Gihun from falling and getting eliminated. Seeing the people who win you know you have the you have the gangster number 101 you have the pickpocket wins the old man wins sang wu wins number 199 wins or survives i guess i should say number 456 gihun wins survives crazy crazy and then while all this is happening Cut back to behind the scenes where now the front man is just lounging in his private room watching this take place on his TV, hitting the remote on uh, uh, this like little box of puppets, these little like mechanical puppets that are singing like it's like a jazz nightclub scene and it's it's fly me to the moon is playing while, you know, slow motion action is taking place of the red light, green light. It's an interesting world up up and down. So he's just chilling while everything. And they all cross. And then you see the doors close. You know, pull back. And it's this, they're on this island that has like this giant roof that just closed. And then that's how the first episode ends. That's all you know. They, the, we saw our, our main characters are all past obviously survived that first game we see the stakes that are are set 
that this is for death. We get to see this crazy world. It's crazy, like jump stepping inside this like this insane game show. It's great. So that's Squid Game season one, episode one, red light, green light. Can't wait until episode two next week, uh, which is titled Hell. Looking forward to that one. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad free over at Patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out!